Welcome back to the program. I'm Zev Brenner. If you've been following some of what's going on online, you probably saw the great beer controversy. Uh, I call this Bud's Not For You. Rabbinic Post Passover beer ban leaves many feeling dry. We'll explore beer as chametz. And uh, so we have our distinguished panel. Rabbi Kalman Weinfeld is Rabbinic Coordinator for Food Services for OK Labs. Dr. Avram Pollock is president of the Star K. And Rabbi Nelson Sternberg is a prominent businessman, grandson of the Kapitchner Rebbe, and he's the right hand of his father-in-law, Crown Heights community leader, Rabbi Eli Slavin. Gentlemen, Shavua Tov, thank you all for joining us. Good Shavua Tov, everybody. Now, here's a situation. For many years, people have been drinking beer um, with no problem, but this year something came about where you discovered that the largest distribution of beer is owned by a Jewish individual. So that caused the problem. So let me begin with Rabbi Kamen Weinfeld. You got, how did you find out that there is an issue, there's a problem that you try to do something about before Pesach? I'm davening at Rabbi Levi's shul in Crown Heights. Together with me, we have Rabbi Nelson Sternberg. He's also davening every Shabbos in Rabbi Levi's shul. And Rabbi Levi is giving a drosha like all other Rabbonim for Shabbos Agodel. The Shabbos before Pesach, and when he says his drosher, his speech for Shabbos Agod, he was talking about the beer problem that the biggest distributor of maybe 70, 75 percentage of beer for New York State is coming from a facility, Manhattan Beer, that owns by a Jew. And for many years, many organizations, rabbis, and that's calling, was trying to talk to him, to meet him, and to convince him to sell the Chomets or the company, and they couldn't do it. They, nobody was able to meet him and you, you to talk you're to him about, about it. You're talking about uh, Simon Ferguson, uh, who has... Bergson, a, Bergson, Mr. Simon Bergson. Right, so he's, he's a Holocaust survivor. He's not familiar with... No, he's not a Holocaust his, survivor. His father and his, his mother, father. Okay. they were in Auschwitz. He was born after the Holocaust, in a VP camp. So up until now, people didn't know that uh, that the main part of beers distributed in the New York metro area was done by a guy who's Jewish. It was not known until this year. I think rabbis and organizations knew about it. Maybe it was okay, can not I, can I interject for just a moment sure. about this because I can give you some information about how this thing came about? Uh, uh, who is this? Go ahead. Yes, this is Dr. Paul. Dr. Paul. Yes. We actually we actually had the same problem with Jewish distributor. In uh, Maryland, it's the same type of thing. They distribute all the beers. And this was last year and two years ago that we had the problem. We were aware of it. And uh, we alerted, actually. There was a uh, conference call. Rabbi Levy from the OK was on that phone call with, together with the heads of a number of other organizations. We have our uh, regular meetings. It's an organization called ACO. And both Rabbi Levy and myself with others are members of this ACO executive committee. And it, we talked about how we have this problem in Baltimore, and we had just found out that there was something similar going on in New York. We had not known about it before. And we mentioned the fact that we were planning to let our, our caterers and the restaurants in the New York area know about this so they can do uh, what's necessary preparation before Pesach. At that meeting, during that phone conference call, uh, everybody was in full agreement that if something can be done to persuade uh, Manhattan Beer to sell their comets, it would be a tremendous, uh, tremendous benefit to kosher consumers. And uh, I know the OU was going to call the, some of the big beer uh, companies that they certify to put pressure on this, and nothing seemed to work. And Rabbi Levy's Drusher and Rabbi Weinfeld, uh, to be highly commended, actually uh, were able to accomplish what uh, many people before them were not able to accomplish, and they did arrange for a sale of the company, of the Hamid, to, uh, uh, to a non-Jew. And uh, as I can't say this uh, strongly enough, the efforts that they put in, uh, they need to be highly commended. Okay, However, uh, there's still a controversy, and I'm sure this will come out during the conversation. I know the Star case still doesn't recommend people to buy beer until Shavuot's time, but before I get to okay. that, I'm just curious to know, this man and this company has been distributing 
uh, beer for many years. It was only recent this came to force. So technically speaking, all these years people were drinking beer chametz olav pesach. Is that would that be a correct assumption? Well, uh, uh, it could very well be uh, that that's true uh, because normally we don't. Nobody was really looking at the distributors. People would go to a non-Jewish store or to a store that they were. That knew that the comets had been sold properly and would buy their beer. Nobody really knew uh, exactly how the New York State and Maryland, for that matter, the uh, state licensing uh, system works. And that is, it seems that only one individual is given the right in certain areas to uh, distribute certain brands of beer. And when it was determined that the main distributor of Manhattan Beer is a Jewish-owned company, uh, alarm bells uh, founded. Uh, technically, you'd be correct that in the past years, people were just not aware of it. But if they weren't aware of it, but it's the facts on the ground would be that people who drank beer um, between after, right after Pesach till around Shavuos time probably were drinking Hamish Aleph Pesa. Beer is more of a problem than whiskey because it's an actual grain that's made from, so that's a pretty big issue, which I think is being corrected this year, but for years past, who knows how long it's been going on like that, correct? Rabbi Weinfeld? Correct. Okay. Yeah, Dr. Pollack is correct, but uh, thank God for this year, but it's the Yaita Dishmaya. So how did you get, now, let's, how, how did you get, now, uh, how did you get to the owner of Manhattan Beer? How did you get to him and, and this Mr. Is a, so, you know, so let me tell you, I was once at a Shaver Borges in Borough Park, and the father of the Kale said at Roshe, and he said that usually parents of Achos and Kale, they say that the Roshe, thanks Hashem, thanks to Hashem that, Baruch Hashem, we have this Hasin and all the expense of the Hasin and everything. He says, this time the Rebishter didn't help me. So everybody was shocked, and we didn't understand what he's trying to say, but he right away explained the situation. He said, this Hasin, the Rebishter did everything. I didn't even help the Rebishter. This time, when we arranged the, uh, the Shtar Mechira with Manhattan beer, we did nothing. We was like Mamesh Shluchim of the Eivishter. The Eivishter helped us from the beginning until the end. He did everything. And what happened did after the Droshe of Rabbi Levi in the shul, next to me was sitting Reb Nossen Sternberg. Like you said by the beginning, is the Akapishni Serenikl. And Alubavitch Echosit. And I told them, we must do something. And he said right away, he knows somebody that he is in a very high position by... Manhattan Beer. But after Shabbos, when he called the guy, he said, I'm already not working anymore at Manhattan Beer. And he said he was trying himself to talk to Mr. Simon Bergson about this issue for a few years, and he didn't want to do anything. But he said, together with this information, that Mr. Simon is a very, very warm, nice Jew, and just that he doesn't know much, but he is really, he's a really good person. And my friend asked him if my friend Rep. Carmen will go to talk to him, will he talk to him? So he said, I don't think he will, he will be able to park his car at the parking lot of Mr. Bergson's facility. Anyway, what I did, I am a Lubavitcher Chosid, working at the OK Kosher, and every time when I need a special broker, I am going to the oil of the Rebbe in Montefiore Cemetery, and I'm asking for a broker. I didn't have time to do it. I uh, asked somebody that was there, you should mention in my name. And I also did, like many Lubavitcher Hasidim, I wrote a letter to the Rebbe in Igroy's Kodesh. And I asked the Rebbe for an eight and a broche, and Hashem should help me with who's if something going to be done for Klali soil. So the letter that the Rebbe what came out in Igroy's Kodesh was about Purim, that in Purim we have the mitzvah of Matonis Loevionim, and Mishloy Achmonos, and the Rebbe says that this is the two ways of avoid Hashem to be mekar of other people. One way is the derech hamusar, that this is maton uh, matonos lo evyonim. You telling another person is a evyon, is doing chatoim, and you need to do teshuva to be moyes bara, to be uh, meshaket tesora, and then to elevate them mitadir Hashem and to bring them to be a baltuve gomur. And this is one way of avoid Hashem. But then there is the Derech HaChasidus, that this is the Derech of Mishloi Achmonois, Ish Lere'eyu. You're telling the other person that he's your friend, that you are elevating him with giving him information about the Eivish there, and uh, there's the Milo of Hasidus. I'll call upon him, because the Rebbe spoke about Mishloi Achmonois, and I like to bake sometimes challahs, 
I like to make cocktails. So, cake so you're, saying is, you're saying it's divine providence that you got to Mr. Burks and you're able to convince him to do it. We'll talk about that. Let me turn to, to Rav Nassim. So let me tell you what I did yes. with the broker of the Rebbe. I went to Mr. Bergson's facility. He was not there because it was on Sunday. And then I went to Mr. Bergson's home address. Rav Nassim Sterbank helped me to find his address. And I met him. At, I'm going to make it very short. It's already uh, all over the magazine, so I don't have to do it now because it's a short time. But I met him and I spoke to him in a way of Hasidus, I told them that uh, I'm here to give you, to give him a present, another opportunity to do something good for Klali soil. And he said that he wants to hear more details, but then he went out with his family and I was waiting for him for two hours at the lobby. And they came back. I had already information from rabbis that directed me how to do the things. And he said we should meet at his office the day after by Monday. I came with Mr. Sternberg. Mr. Sternberg helped me with also to find out that they have more than one facility. They have five facilities. So by the Shtar Mechire, we include all facilities with all storages, but we didn't did a Mechire for the Chomet only. We did a Mechire with the whole entire company. The whole business was sold to Agoy, the chief operation manager of the place. He even did, before the act of the Mechire, he did the film the second time in his life, 57 years after his Mitre. He was very excited about it. And uh, Baruch Hashem, the rest is history. And, and, and he never heard of, of, of Hummus, all of a Passover, Hummus that Passover passes over, right? No, he healed. He didn't know exactly what this is. According to, according many to the rabbis, Ford article, he didn't, he didn't seem to quite know, understand it, I should say. He didn't understand that, and nobody had the opportunity to really explain him what is this about, and it's something that can make so much good for hundreds of thousands of people. When he heard this, he says, I'm here to help the Jewish communities to do the right thing. So let me turn now to Dr. Pollock from the Star K, the president of the Star K. So you said that you liked the fact that the OK went out and they got a star Mechira that they sold the business so there shouldn't be hummus that Passover passes over on. Right. So why mm-hmm. is the Star K opposed to people buying beer? And I know the CRC also is, is opposed to it. So if, if it's done and you like what he did and you're giving him an applause for doing that, okay. why are you opposed? Well, first let me say why we so appreciative of what the Circle K and Rabbi Weinfeld did. Uh, the fact that they were able to convince him to sell the comments certainly alleviated a very serious problem, as you alluded to before, uh, and that many, many people who uh, not knowingly uh, buying beer uh, would at least have some type of uh, mechira that was done, and there is there are some very valid uh, poskim that uh, on which to rely. The Star K. This is not a new thing. This is not something that happened this year with the Star K. And I'll give you an example. Uh, we don't allow our supermarkets, our, all our places, to buy from many stores and distributors because one of the main distributors for kosher food is also new, uh, a Jewish-owned business. And even though they sell their chametz, there was a, there's a chametz uh, that's arranged by the Chaf K kosher certifying agency every year. Star K does not still allow their establishments to buy from this, and we actually, for people who ask us, uh, we tell them, we put out a do a lot of research to tell them which stores to buy in the Baltimore area right after Pesach. We even publish it in our guide for Pesach. And the reason is because a business that sells their chametz, but they continue that to do business as usual on Pesach. They don't sequester the chametz, so they don't. Uh, all it is is a sale. Uh, it's a legal document, maybe. Sometimes it's not such a legal document. But if it's just something that they sold and they continue doing the business as they normally did, it's not the type of mechira that the Sarke has ever accepted. So this, and I'm not saying that, and, uh, and I want to emphasize that there are many um, postkin who did uh, endorse such a type of mechira. Now, everybody has quoted the famous chuva from Rabbi Moshe Feinstein, who was talking about where somebody sold his chametz, uh, a storekeeper, and that person then continues to do business as usual, sell the chametz. 
So Reb Moshe's response was, well, there's still a Bechira took place. Maybe the owner has no right to sell the Chametz because it doesn't belong to him, but that doesn't invalidate the sale. And Reb Moshe does say that this is an acceptable practice. It's not something that should be done L'Chatchila in the first place, but it's only something if there's no other choice. The Star K has not accepted this type of sale for our establishments. And when people ask us, uh, we definitely recommend that they buy from either a non-Jewish establishment or somebody that uh, sold their chametz and does not do business as usual on Pesach. So you're this saying example, this, with Manhattan Beer Company, mm -hmm. there was no interruption of the business of the sale of beer. And it is for that reason that we tell people, listen, there wasn't a sale. It's valid according to some opinions. Other opinions say that it is not valid. And therefore, ask your own rub on what you should do. But for Stark establishments, we chose to always do it. And it's not something that we did this year. And it was a little bit disconcerting to see some of the blogs and some of the publications kind of uh, hinting at the fact that maybe this was a... Uh, an argument or a fight over turf between different cautious organizations. Nothing but that. And anybody who's expecting to see sparks fly during this conversation, you're going to be disappointed. Uh, 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 over and over, we, gr we greatly appreciate what the OK and Rabbi Weinfeld does. But, but, but before we break, so my question to Dr. Pollock is, so your standards are more stringent than the OK or the OU or the other cautious groups when it comes I, to the uh, Actually, the OU, the OU has the same policy, by the way. Because I'm, get, I'm getting some Donald emails. Had, yeah. I, I didn't get a chance to speak to Robert Moshe, but I'm getting some emails from people. The OU is on the OK side, so maybe they're wrong. I'm just getting some emails. They, the OU, with their establishments, does not accept that type of mechira either. That's, that's what I've been told by the... But, you know, every organization has to make their own policies based on what their Rabbanim uh, decide is what they want to do. Well, that doesn't mean that if, you know, there are many, many different areas in Kashrus that one has to look at. If I have time, I want to just very quickly, because it's this week's Parsha that talked about all the laws of Kashrus and uh -huh. Parsha Shemini. You know, we find that a, a tremendously, uh, a real, something very intriguing that I don't know if everybody has heard about that. The Torah told, tells us about three kinds of animals that they have only one of the signs of kosher. And the, the, the Torah mentions three animals that have split hoofs but don't chew their cud. And in one of them, when it, the Torah talks about a camel, the Torah uses a uh, terminology, uparsa enenu mafris. Its hoofs are not being split. It's a, in, in the present tense. When the Torah mentions a shofan, a kind of a rabbit or a hare, it says uparsa lo yafris. It will not in the future have its hoofs split. And then finally, the third kind of animal, a neves, it's another form of a rabbit. It says it has the sign of chewing its cud, but uparsalo hefrisa, its feet were not split in the past. There's got to be some important message here about why the Torah changes the tense. that We have the present, the past, and the future when it talks about this. And in all cases, the Torah spells it out separately. Tamehu lachem, it is un impure. And I think you know, there are many interpretations, many answers, because it's such an obvious question. But I've heard once, uh, perhaps homiletically, that whenever a decision is made, you have to know the circumstances. You need to know the past, you need to know the present, and you need to know the future. And different organizations, uh, especially in a case like this, will interpret uh, these events the way they see fit based on reliable uh reputable Rabbanim who will decide for their congregations, for their uh, adherents, for their constituents, constituencies exactly how they're going to advise them. And that's exactly what's happening here. We have so, to break. We have to break. That, that is the way of Torah. That is the way of Jewish life. Even though, by the way, amplifying what you said, Rabbi Yisrael Salanter says when we're sometimes quick to condemn people, he says this is the the lesson from the three different expressions of the split hoof, is that so you, if somebody made a mistake, don't just look at the past, look where he is in the present. Maybe there's some yeah. mitigating services. If you don't like the present, look to the future. But before you say something is tummy, impure, or person is impure, look at all the facts, look at the past, look at the present, see what the future might be before you condemn somebody. And I thought that's also a beautiful lesson. Our guest, you just heard Dr. Avram Pollock. He's the president of the Star K, and they don't like... 
Uh, they don't want you to buy beer from Manhattan uh, beer distributors if between now and Pesach. The OK sold the Hummus. Rabbi Kamlin Weinfeld is a Britain coordinator of Food Service OK Labs. We'll hear from Rabbi Nussan Sternberg, a prominent businessman who works with his father-in-law, Rabbi Eli Slav, in the Crown Heights community, who helped facilitate the selling of the Hummus. Welcome back to the program. I'm Zev Brenner, and uh, our guest for a little while longer, we're looking at the great beer controversy. Um, so our guests include from the OK, Rabbi Kalman Weinfeld, who's been a coordinator for the food services of OK Labs, Dr. Avram Pollock, who's president of Star K. Rabbi Nussan Sternberg is a prominent businessman, a grandson of the Kapishna Rebbe, right-hand man of his father, community, father-in-law, community leader, Rabbi Eli Slavin. Let me turn to you, uh, Rabbi just, uh, Sternberg. You have a big hand, I understand, in getting this whole thing at least to make sure that the hummus was sold, Correct. Good luck. I Good luck. had some hand in this. Um, I'll make it very brief. Fifteen years ago, I worked for a food and beverage company in Brooklyn, and we happened to use the same software as Manhattan Beer. And once a year, I would travel to Baltimore to a user conference for the software, and there was one other from Yid amongst a few hundred beer distributors, and he happened to be the CFO of Manhattan Beer. And I remember marveling how a from Yid was able to get a such a high position in such a large company. And I met him twice, two year, one year after the other, and that was pretty much it. And um, during the Shabbos I got to Russia when Rabbi Levy was talking about this issue with the beer company, and he said the largest beer distributor, right away something went off in my head, and I figured he must be referring to uh, Manhattan beer. And... Um, I know someone there, and, you know, what could be the big deal? I'll call him to talk to his boss and arrange their sale. So after the drusha, um, I went over to Rabbi Levy, and I asked him if he is referring to Manhattan. And he said yes, and I said, I happen to know someone there. I would be glad to call him. And he said that would be a wonderful thing if I could please do it. Mata Shabbos, I, I didn't even have a phone number or an email address to this CFO, uh, Mata Shabbos, I started working the phones, and I had contacts that are still at that um, company I used to work for and other people in the industry, and they all agreed to help right away. And with their help, I was able to reach this former CFO who told me that he's no longer with the company, and he knows that there is nothing to discuss. It was tried many years ago, and year after year, and he was told that he will not sell the Hamad. He does not think it's a logical thing. He thinks it's a farce, and any effort was fruitless. And he basically told me to give up hope. And I told him, uh, you don't know Robert stop, Weinfeld. Uh, let, me, let me just stop you for one moment. So it was known that this is a major beer dis- distributor here in the New York metropolitan area, and attempts were made in the past to get him to sell the hummus, which he didn't want to do. He viewed it as a farce. So why didn't the general public know about it? And the cautious groups may not have known about it because nobody was alerted to the fact that this whole thing is just coming to fore this year. Well, I'm not involved in the cautious business. I'm just wondering out loud. I'm, I'm wondering if anybody... Excellent question. I, um, I, I it, don't think people knew that he was Jewish. For but many years. But and obviously recently, some people knew because people approached me, thought it was a farce, but people worked for him. So people knew. They didn't alert the public. I'm just wondering, because this is a serious violation of, of Hametz, that Pesach passes over, Hametz all over Pesach. It's a very serious thing. That's why I'm wondering out loud. No, 100%. This person worked for him, and perhaps he didn't know how harsh this is, and uh, I guess he didn't want to go public about his own company. I can't answer for him. But I don't think the general public knew that this company was owned by Jews and how dominant he was in distributing beer in New York City and beyond the entire state, for that matter. Here's an email I'm getting coming in. This caller says, I, listener, I should say, I spoke with the OU this week regarding the beer, and I was told all is fine. Dr. Pollack, so did you speak to the OU? Uh, that, they, they, yes, they are telling uh, people, consumers, when I, when I said before that the OU does not accept such a mechira, with their companies, they don't allow such a sale of chametz. Now, the sale of chametz, Rabbi Weinfeld, is, is you didn't actually sell the chametz, you sold the business, right? I sold the old, entire, old, entire business with the facilities, with the chametz, with the business. 
Now, is there a pro- do you view that as Dr. Powell? Do you view that as a problem? Because what happens if God forbid something happens to the business? Who sustains the loss in this situation? That, that that's only one of the issues involved. There are many, many complicated issues. Uh, well, all I can tell you, and again, I'm not the rabbinic administrator for Star K. Uh, Rabbi Heinemann is our rabbinic uh, administrator. But basically, a um, sale of chametz where there's no real gemira stas, which means there's no full intention to relinquish the chametz and full uh, over Pesach and just continue doing business as usual, but just because you signed the document or something like that, that is not sufficient. And it is star K policy that in our establishments we don't uh, do that. And we're many other organizations, not as well. But isn't that the whole premise? Because when people sell the chametz, then based on that, the majority of the chametz that's being sold by the average household owner, maybe small business, is falls in that category, right? Because if something happens, who would sustain the loss? It wouldn't be the person who bought it. It will be actually the, the homeowner. No, it actually, theoretically, it would be the person who bought it. I can tell you in Baltimore a number of years ago, um, Rabbi Heinemann, um, who sells the chametz for much of our community, many of the other rabbis, and certainly all the Starkey businesses, he arranges the sale. Um, and uh, on a number of occasions, he has had the Gentile who purchased the chametz actually come knocking on the doors of people uh, on their homes. It was just for show, but to reinforce that idea that this is a real sale. And the Gentile, who happened to be a retired police officer, actually, uh, knocked on his door, on a friend of mine's door, and he said, I'm here to take a look at my comments. I want to take some of it. And, of course, Rabbi Heinemann is the one who set him up to do that, but he really wanted to teach a valuable lesson to the community that when you sell your comments, it's a real sale. Of course, it's probably a real sell, but... You know, lots of times people are away, and there's no way people get into it for the chametz, right? These are all various okay, so issues. Okay, in, 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 in the contract of sale of chametz, you actually put in a clause that says you're renting the premises in which chametz is stored. And the different ways of selling the chametz, either you sell the whole pr- premise or you sell just the chametz itself. Well, uh, yeah, uh, uh, yes, uh, again. But the, the problem over here is, which really which is the crux of this whole issue, is... When the person who owns the chametz, the business, if he's only selling the chametz but continues doing business as usual, uh, you know, buying and selling as though nothing has happened, that is the question that we're dealing with. Well, here's a Joseph here has a question too, Dr. Paul. According to Rabbi Heinemann, if there is a broken pipe that ruins all the chametz, who shoulders the loss? The, the owner of the chametz, which is the Gentile. The gentle. So then, okay, so then afterwards, but, uh, okay. Yeah. Now, you know, the, and the way chametz is normally sold, uh, it's at the, there's a, usually a, a high price that is set on it. But if the Gentile theoretically says, I want that chametz, he has the right to that chametz. Of course. If he pays then, the price that was agreed upon. I don't think, I, I, again, I don't know the exact details. I did see the star the contract over here in Manhattan Beer. It's a, it was a one-page document. I did read it. But if this person who was the business, the manager, would come and say, I want now to take control, I'm going to pay the stipulated price, would he really be able to do that? This is all questions that many, many Rabbonim for centuries have debated these issues on exactly what is a valid type. And there are differences of opinion. And every... Body is every uh, post sake and every cautious organization, as I mentioned before, needs to decide this for themselves. And any individual listening, or any individual for that matter who's not listening, uh, is in a quandary what should I do? They should assist their own. Do I rely on it or do I not? It's a oh, very complicated uh, solution. Uh, Am I allowed to say something? Uh, of course, you're allowed to say something. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Dr. Pollack. Of course. I was listening and I respect, uh, you explained very, very well the, the, the situation, but I spoke to over 10 rabbis from Williamsburg, Borough Park, Farakway, Five Towns, and others, Erev Shabbos, because they called me, they have 
questions in the community about the Mechire and they want to know if to rely. And I was so honest just to say what happened at the Mechire. And then they got the information exactly, the way of the Gmiras Das of the Balabos to do the Mechire, the way of the Goy to buy everything, the way how they did it seriously. Even my friend Reb Nossin, doing the Mechire, told me quietly, I think you're saying too much and you're giving too much information because might be that they're going to be scared to sign. Before they sign, they change the star again, not the star, the, 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 the put all facilities, like I said before, and they ask many, many questions. They put the amount in a serious way, and they felt that they're doing something very, very right. Even the day after, when one rabbi that is trying to reach up to, the, uh, to speak to Mr. Bergson every year, and he's not even picking up the phone, the first time in the history, a rabbi in the Bronx, the first time in the history that he picked up the phone, he says, I want to speak to the rabbi. And before the rabbi even say, said anything, he says, if you want to tell me about the homes, I did it yesterday already. He was so proud of himself that he's doing something according to the Jewish law. And he did, he did it very seriously. Any rabbi that wants me to talk to him on the phone to explain details about it, I'm not talking about like the star case saying, we don't accept in general, even the Mechir should be the best Mechir like we did. This is another thing. If rabbis are saying that they have a problem with this Mechire, I can explain more details and everybody will be very, very happy. This is why this past last Friday night, many, many communities in the Hasidic Williamsburg communities, Boropak and others, was bringing a lot of bills in a lot of Shalom Zohar, a lying rabbi Weinfeld in the OK Kosher Mechire. Now, by, by the way, how did Mr. Berkson take the fact that there's a controversy where some rabbis say you can drink beer that he distributes, some people say you can't, and he, by the way, made the point that he doesn't really distribute much of Budweiser. He said Budweiser is owned by a Jew, too. So he's trying to deflect some of the criticism of, I guess, the fact that he's, uh, there's a problem. I think uh, well, Mr. Berkson, if you know, will betray the company. I'm sorry, what? Yeah, but he I, but, I, but, but he yeah. made reference to the forward newspaper had a, had a story where he said, "Well, you know, there is a there's a stair show who's Jewish and and uh, and Bud, so you can't well, drink Bud." You, you, look, you go after the you go after the majority shareholders, and it's a, it's a publicly traded company, uh, so you know. I know because we're talking about majority of beer. I think we can say similar. The majority of the communities was using this Shabbos beer. Okay, so uh, but, yeah. uh, except the soccer what the CRC says you can't, so I'm not sure if Williamsburg they were drinking it. But CRC are talking about another case. Rabbi Weinberger and the CRC, very, very choshi verabonim and a choshi verbezim, Isaacus Arabonim, we respect them so much. They don't know details of the Mechir. If they, if they would pick up the phone and talking to Rabbi Levi or to myself, they would go out with another letter or they would never write anything. But, but so far, so are you reaching out to them? I mean, it should be that difficult to communicate this to them? No, it, uh, I, think, I think what will happen, they would, maybe they said already to the communities that it's not a big problem. Maybe they say, if you want to be Mahmir, you can be Mahmir. And the rabbi of the Isachus, I think Rabbi Klein, said to the magazine on Shabbos, uh, the Moment magazine, that uh, they give a big yashikoyach to the OK Kosher, to myself, about... Uh, what we did, and uh, it's not like they said at the beginning that this Mechira is like nothing, and if they would write another letter, it's up to them. I'm not running the Isaktu Sarabonim. I'm just working at the OK Kosher, and I did something also in a personal level for Klali Soil. Okay, let me tell you. Let, 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 me, let, me squeeze, let me squeeze in one phone call before we go. Uh, let's go to Williamsburg. Mayor in Williamsburg, you have a question or comment for our guests. Go ahead, Mayor in yeah, Williamsburg. Yeah, I just want to say I just want to make comments that in Williamsburg we use the beer because all the Shamoshim in the shuls who made the Shalom Zohar or anything like that, they had the beer in that possession before Pesach and they sold it by themselves. That's the reason all the shuls, there were the, there was the Moidoas, there was the, the shields that uh, uh, we allowed the beer that they're using because they sold them themselves before Pesach. Wait, 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 by people. the way, that's controversial too, to sell Mamish Chametz, that's a question. Uh, Right. Uh, well, uh, well uh, there was a letter that we shouldn't use it from the store, but the beer that we used in the shuls was the beer that they sold it themselves before Pesach because it was owned by the Eden, and they sold it themselves before Pesach. So right. Not, not only, not price. only. I got a few Dayolim from Williamsburg talking to me, and then distributors of beer in 
Williams Wolves saying that they are relying on this Mechira. Uh, I, mean, I, I don't know. I, I don't know, but I know that in the South Mashul where I was, that was uh, that was the situation. All right, Mayor, thank you for telling us about uh, what the situation is on the ground in Williamsburg. Yeah. So you had your beer, Mayor, right? We had beer, yes. So you had your bud. Should be okay. more shalom zochers in this session. <laughs> okay. A lot of simcha, that day, many simcha. Amen, lechaim, lechaim. Amen, amen, amen. Gentlemen, we're almost uh, at, at the end. So i just trying to get a clear handle. Was Mr. Bergson upset by the controversy that this whole thing... Into? Here he is, he's trying to do his good deed. I started asking this question before. He's doing his good deed, and then there's, he's a matter of controversy yeah. where some see people say, buy his stuff, don't buy his stuff that he distributes. Is he upset about it? Anybody speak oh, to Oh, I him? don't know. I don't know if he is aware so much, but if, even if he will be aware, the way how I saw him at the meeting in his house, outside his house, and then by the office, I think Mr. Bergson is such a, a guy with his personality, I think he can't ever be upset. This is his personality. This is what right, I let, think. Let me, can, like can I ask a question? Yes, yeah. good. go ahead. Yeah, just a quick question. But what the Mechir, if the owner is doing business himself on Pesach, so... What type of is that? I mean, it's uh, commercial. Affairs. He's not the owner. He's not the owner. He sold the business. He didn't sell only the home. He sold the whole entire. And for example, like many, many Haimi Shayidin are selling the company for Shabbos, and the, the company is still open for Shabbos. So this star was much a better star than other many stories of Haimi Shayidin, with all the respect. Uh, here's the final okay, question. I'm, I'm, just, I, I, I'm not a dying. I can't comment on that. I'm just saying, you know, the facts. Anyway, I appreciate your phone call. We just have moments. Uh, okay. here, this address to, to Dr. Uh, Pollock. From, uh, what does he mean? If the comments in my house gets ruined, the Gentile will pay me for it? Is what the listener wants to know. No, he owns the Chomets. It's your Chomets. He has to pay for it because it was his. Right. But theoretically, contractually, uh, it, he, the, the Gentile owns the Chomets. That, that's, that's, otherwise, what kind of a sale is it? Sales, but, you know, but, but if something happens to it, it's, uh, you have no responsibility? By the way, in Europe, from what I understand, there are some situations where people sold the hummus to a non-Jew, like a beer factory, or, and, and they didn't want to sell it back after Pesach. There have been cases, if I yeah. remember correctly. And that, you're absolutely correct. Even though I'm not sure that has happened in the United States. I, I know in Europe, uh, from what I understand, it, it transpired. Well, the way, the way, so the way the Rabbanim structure the sale to prevent something like that from happening is to make such a high price. If the Chumps is worth you know, $500,000, they'll stay, uh, put down that he has to pay for it. Uh, upon the, like after Pesach, if he, you know, he has an option to, give it, to, to not go through with the sale, with the final delivery of the Chomet, but the price would be a uh, million dollars, twice as much as the Chomet. So no uh, guy in his right mind would uh, want to do that. But theoretically, he does have the right. And a guy can say, um, listen, uh, you know, it's mine. And I, I'll, I'll short you a story about uh, something that happened in Baltimore. Rabbi Heinemann one year found out that the... Uh, Guy, he's a Gentile that he's been selling the chametz to for many years, had a Jewish wife. So somebody says, well, what did you do? Says, I've davened for him all year this, that he should live and be well, because if he dies, Jewish wife is going to inherit all his chametz, and, and it's, we have a major problem on our hands. I think he's going to be in trouble all over Pesach. By the way, someone just emailed me, I don't know if this was correct or not, that Bronfman and Canna had a problem uh, with uh, non-Jew, didn't want to uh, buy back the chametz, so... Uh, in Canada, uh, so that's an, and again, we're, we're out of time, so I want to thank you. So the way it stands, uh, Rabbi Kalman Weinfeld, rabbinic coordinator, food service, OK Lab. So you say it's no problem whatsoever. You can drink beer that's been distributed from Manhattan to beer. No problem in the tri-state area. Again, this is what we think, and each one is going according to his shittas and rabbis in communities. Each organization has his own opinion, and we respect everybody. And like the Dr. Pola from the Star case said that they respect and they are very thankful what, to what we did, but then they stick to their policy. And this is the only one way what we can run organizations and do something good when everybody is uh, really recognizing the good things that the other guy and the other organization did. And then he's really following his own rabbi, his own shittas. Okay, so thank Rabbi Kalman Weinfeld. Dr. Avram Pollock is the president of Starkey. So Starkey says don't drink the beer until, pay, until Shavuos, correct? 
in the New York area. That those particular beers, you can uh, you can get beer from uh, other places that uh, other maybe in New Jersey it's not a problem. I don't know. In Maryland, there's certainly no problem because we uh, make arrangements with the stores that uh, run the certification. They buy large quantities of actually their their own sale of hummets. So, or in some stores, what they do is they will. Uh, already own it, the beer, the stores themselves, even if they're, and they will sequester it, uh, so that they cannot sell it or on Pesach. And that is a valid type of money, according to Star K. Anyway, uh, thank you. And I want to thank you, Rabbi Nussin Sternberg, who's a prominent businessman. So thank you, uh, for being with us as well. Thank you for your role and, and making sure there was a, a, a Star Mahira, at least uh, for Manhattan beer this year. So thank you for your work. Gentlemen, thank you. Good vach. Good vach. Good vach. L'chaim, l'chaim, l'chaim. And I say to and I say to Baruch Atah Be'ir. Okay. Good vach. Thank you. Good vach. Thank you.